Namaste. Morning. A balanced practice consists of the following. Short asana, pranayama, or energetic practices, and meditation. Yeah. They go hand in hand. So how can we sustain our body sitting for prolonged periods of time if our joints are weak, if our core is not strong enough to withstand the pressure, and yeah, our minds and our bodies are restless. Yeah? Because sitting for prolonged periods of time, although externally it looks simple, it is difficult. Yeah? And how <laughs> can we still the mind if our bodies are restless, if the energy is stuck? All right. So for today, yeah, let me give you a conceptual structure of the practice. All right. So for your asana, so I suggest yeah, you move your spine in various directions. Yeah. You might do your vinyasa if you're flowing, Surya Namaskar. Yeah, it's a classical one, but if that one is too difficult for you, yeah, you might do, or if you want to vary, for example, uh, add some components and then change your program once in a while, you might do some sitting asana. And the sitting asanas are uh, energetically beneficial. Yeah, why? Because when we're sitting, we stimulate the nerves of the lower clusters, yeah, the haps and the sacrum, and even the core. Right. And there are many sitting asanas, but for me, yeah, there are like two or three powerful ones and still doable. Yeah. One is the Pashimottanasana or your extended forward bend or your sitting narrow forward bend. So extending the legs forward in front of you. And to breathe through this, you, know, you may lightly move first the hips and then inhaling as you shift, exhaling. All right. uh, you may shake and kick the legs like this. Um, Wiggle the toes, uh, point and flex. All right. Yeah, pointing your toes first. Yeah, and then from that pointed ankle, flexing yeah, your toes. So your ankle is pointed, but the toes are flexed. Uh, it's a combination of um, stretching the front and the back planes of our legs. And if you feel a stagnation there, yeah, so you may want to move side to side. You may loosen the leg, turn the thigh bone in. Good, and out. Right. Inhale the spine over the head, and exhale. Inhale as you reach forward, and exhale, grab hold of your toes. If this is not uh, sustainable, if this is heavy for your low back, just rest your forearm there, or you may place something under your knees. All right. But what's important here, the principle is we flex the spine, closing the hips. Yeah. So flexion is one movement we need to do to encourage your spine to open up, and this uh, opens the posterior side of the body. Good. And then maybe stay here for like 30 seconds, breathing mindfully. That's about five breaths. Yeah. Uh, long breath in, long breath out, yeah, depending on the length of your breath. Yeah. And then to rise, yeah, this is important. Now breathing in, the lower belly hugs the spine. Inhale, pull back, rise, exhale, shift the weight back, and let your legs go limp. And then you do your yeah, half stretches, yeah, bending the knee like this. And then kicking and stretching. Yeah, don't rush. And then wiggle the legs and side to side. Uh, and after the Pashimottanasana, yeah, you may do the Ardra Matsyendrasana. Yeah, so it's a twist. All right, so right leg or either leg crossing under. Yeah. And the other knee hooks on top. All right, so Ardra Matsyendrasana is done best. Sitting uh, maybe, yeah. Um, on a cushion or flat on the ground. Yeah, here, bending, and here. All right, so let me give you the full position. All right, so the heel, the bottom heel, yeah, serves as a stop for the hip, the opposite hip. So lifting the hip and then yeah, using the heel yeah, to grip against the bone of the hip. Yeah, and then lightly, yeah, lift the hip back and slide the thigh back. All right. In here, you don't want to cross that foot really deep. Rather, the foot is slightly in front. Yeah. So it's like a line from the foot, ankle, knee. All right. Because if you cross too deep, 
Yeah, you won't have the mobility of the spine. So, looks like yeah, it's um, it's a bind. Yes, it's a bind. However, we don't bind too deep. Rather, yeah, keep the foot lightly in front. So this really requires strength. Yeah, and then the heel serves as a stop. All right, lift, slide back. All right, one side is uh, tighter than the other. All right. Roll the shoulder around. Here yeah, you may support the knee with the arm. And here you roll the thigh bone in, like you want to move the adductors out of the way. And then this will make room for the side trunk to move away from the creases of the hip. Alright, so this is deep already on its own. This one. Alright. To progress. Yeah, shift the weight there. So in here. The hip is not really pressing down, rather it's the heel supporting that side of you. And then the heel is pressing against the fleshy part of the buttock and the bone of the hip. Like that. Yeah, so it's not the sitting bone, it's the yeah, the um, the pointed bone uh, yeah, on the side of the hip because the sitting bone is under, close to our buttock, but it's on the side. Yeah. I don't know what we call that bone is, but yeah, it's there. Yeah, you won't miss this. Now from there, reach out and here. All right, so how do we align the arm? Now first, hug elbow in, in and rotate out externally. Good. And then here, roll the shoulder a few times, lift and slide back and then twist around. Uh, so this is the full yeah, position of the Ardhra Sindrasana. Like you can fit yourself yeah, through a tiny gap. Yeah. It's not too cross yeah, because you will round, you will hunch for that. So this is important. Huh? So it's like only a part of your leg is touching the knee. Okay, and then from there, yeah, how do you breathe? So let's do this one. Inhaling. Exhale, really hollow deep in the core region, you know, like a gentle vacuum. Uh, move the shoulder up and around. And inhale, open up. Good. And then you can breathe your ujjayi here. Like you want to send the breath down to the abdomen, the hip cavity, but don't bulge. Don't uh, force it. And exhale, empty, 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 go hollow. Uh, you might do some adjustment. And then you stay, yeah. And breathe mindfully for this. All right, and to release. Yeah, reversing, inhale, hang. Yeah, banda, yeah, remember our lesson on the banda. Inhale, let it hang. Shift towards that hip, yeah. Free your arm, untangle, let the leg go. All right, and then find the leg, find the hips. Yeah. And to release stagnation, you know, do some kriyas, adjustment there. Um, you might kick, um, stretch and kick. Um, right. and, and then you may do the other side. But don't go straight to the other side. Do some gentle forms of restoration. All right. Third asana, upavishtakonasana. Oh, you can do the Kurmasana, if you're ready. All right, it's sitting wide leg forward bend or the turtle position. All right, so open the legs apart. Uh, if you're working with a prop, maybe a thick blanket there or your yoga block, yeah. Pressing yeah, to create the grip forward the pelvis. All right. First, you might internally rotate your thigh bone to make room for the tail and the lower spine to lengthen behind you. At the same time, moving your chest and your upper back away from the hips and settle. But you don't want your legs to turn in. Now push the heel away from the body and that will naturally yeah, rotate the thigh bone to a neutral external opening. And, and open up, inhaling. Yeah. Exhale, inhale, climb forward, exhale, soften, inhale, reaching, exhale, soften. So that's a breath pattern. Every time you attempt to go lower, lose some by lifting up and then dropping low. All right, so the Kurmasana is yeah, a deeper um, variation. So if you're doing the Kurmasana, lift tail, slide the tail back, 
Good. And then and slide your arms under your knees. You have to do that. Breathing in. You know, push the heel away. You know, traction the neck. You know, wiggle there. Like you want to move your neck away from the rest of your spine. You know, and exhale. Yeah, chin down. Yeah, if this is difficult for your breathing, you can turn the head to the side, the side, yeah, and settle. All right, energize the thigh. Yeah, you may lift the hips and then move your spine away from the joints. Good, and then to release, yeah, breathing in, untangle one arm, roll it in, press the hand, and then the other hand, yeah, and settle the joints, inhale. Good. Lean back, shorten one hip, and the other hip, and then bending, bending, and then bending. All right, so those are three asanas you can do sitting. All right, so you have the flexion, you know, very close to the spine. You have the twist, yeah, the binding twist, and you have a combination of hip opening, yeah, spinal side stretch, Uvabhishta Konasana, and upper back stretch. All right, now. To finish your uh, sequence, yeah, I suggest you do yeah, two more spinal movement, side bending, lateral extension, and uh, back bend. All right, so for the side bendings after you're sitting, for example, you can do yeah, downward dog, this one, yeah, push and pull, yeah, kicking, stretching, circling around, but, yeah, and then stepping, yeah. One foot between the hands and the heel down. You may start with the second warrior first, this one. Yeah, you may roll the shoulders, yeah, stretch and bend, and arch back and open. All right, D, yeah, side angle position. Easy with the forearm, or place your hand grabbing hold of the ankle, or flat on the ground in front, or outside the foot, and reach the opposite arm over the head. All right, so you don't want to be dropping the hips too loose. Rather, yeah, lightly, you know, move the tailbone forward and then roll the thigh bone in, and this will give you that openness for your side trunk. And staying here, breathing in. As you inhale, you may want to loosen. Exhale, soften. Good. You don't have to go flat, or but if you can, yeah, look towards your top hand. Good. Good. And exhale. All right. I suggest open the legs again out and wide. Yeah. So this is like your restoration. Before you do the opposite side, you may compass the side and then the other side. And then you may do a forward bend. So this is also a side stretch. Let the side trunk hang and then loosen. You may rub the tongue inside the mouth, circling around, drying the mouth, sealing the tongue against the upper heart palate. Good. And do the opposite side. All right. And then do the forward bend again. Okay. And then last, uh, you do a back bend. All right. So Ushtrasana, for example. Yeah. This one. And the kneeling back bend. Rise and open. Rise. Yeah, you may walk the knees. Climb the shoulders up. Good. You may just place your hands to support your spine. Open up the chest. Or you can reach further back and grab hold of your heels, maybe the fingertips only. All right, push down through your knees, it's important. Press down, yeah. Make the belly flat and thin. Roll the shoulders up and around and suspend backwards. All right, don't force the back bend. Yeah, this is the most difficult part of the practice. Yeah, if you want to use the block, for example, here. Yeah, you know that you can reach, but it's too intense. Good. Or you may lower the block, yeah, so it becomes your additional support. And one more thing, when you do your back bend, especially the kneeling ones, you don't want your knees too wide. Rather, you want to keep them in, yeah, so there's stability in the hips. And then you're using the breath to move the spine long. Good. And you're reaching back. So strength. Back bend is really strength. Like you want to open the discs of your spine without dumping your pelvis. Because if your knees are wide, the probability your tail will scoop down and that will compress your lumbar region. All right. So after a back bend, an another alternative for the back bend, if you want the gentle one, yeah, you can do this. Good. 
like the snake, you know, sliding forward and then open up. All right, so depending on uh, what your body feels for that particular session, you may do a kneeling back bend or a supported such as this. All righty, and after that, yeah, you do your restoration. All right, so for me, you know, the most ideal restoration after your asana practice is the Matsyakridasana. All right, Matsyakridasana, I've given so many tutorials about the Matsyakridasana. You may take a look at them so you can appreciate the technique. All right, rest your body flat, bending one knee to the side, reach your free arm out, and then just rest there. And after a few breaths there, circle the knee around, kick and stretch, side to side. You can do this. There are many ways of doing this, uh, but the idea is to allow the weight of the body to sink down the floor and let the breath go there because when we're lying prone, especially the flapping fish position, the hips are open, the joints are loose, we can send the energy from yeah, the breath inspiring in down to the hips in the core region. Yeah, nourishing the organs there. It's good for your nerves. It goes, it's good for relaxing the hips and good for yeah, stimulating the Muladhara, Swadhisthana, and the Manipura chakras. Those are the three important chakras so we can channel the energy during pranayama. All right. If the hips, the spine, yeah, especially the bottom part, is closed during pranayama, yeah, it's like you're planting your seed in stone. Yeah. Yes, um, you're doing pranayama, but it won't bear fruit yeah, because the primal energy, we need to harness that primal energy from the hips. Yeah. Good. And then staying here. Yeah. And then do your stretching. Uh, and then to balance, you may do this, let them fall, and then reverse. And staying the same amount of time. All right. And yeah, do another one of this to balance, or you can do yeah. um, your knee circles. I love this. I don't have a name for this, but I call this side to side hips. You hang and suspend, swimming the leg, crisscrossing the legs. Good. And then after this, what you do is to just flip. Yeah. You may do your pranayama after. Yeah. And notice how you can sustain it longer. The hips are open and the spine is open. The energy is flowing. Doing pranayama is meaningful and beneficial. All right. So after pranayama, depending on your time duration, yeah, your program, yeah, if you feel like stagnation, yeah, release the pranayama and do a mild adjustment, roll the shoulders, yeah, and continue. Then after the pranayama, yeah, you may relax in the shavasana. You may do actually your meditation in the shavasana position with the head slightly elevated. Yeah, so watch my tutorial on the Shavasana. Yeah, I, there I discuss the detail of this position, but in a nutshell, when you do our Shavasana, yeah, the head is not too flat, so there's a light elevation. So the neck region, the back of the neck is open from the throat, from the hips, and the energy can rise through your cranial cavity. Good. Or you may do your meditation <laughs> traditionally sitting and holding it longer. When you do your meditation, cover your body, cover your cold spots. Yes, so intellectualizing that yoga is not the physical, um, yes, um, it's not purely physical, but the body is, I say, the vehicle. Yeah. So we can't be invoking that yoga is not the asana, yeah, but sitting and holding it still. But yes, as I've mentioned, how can we sustain this for prolonged periods of time? If our joints are heavy, if the muscles are tight, if the core is not aware, if the body is inflexible, definitely the mind will get distracted and we won't be able to hold our mind still. So yes, yeah, yoga, for me, <laughs> there's no advanced way of doing this. Yeah, an asana may be advanced, but still, it's an advanced yoga because you're tackling a part of the yoga which promotes yeah, stability, strength, and prepares you for the next one. Yeah. Pranayama, yes, there are advanced pranayama, but pranayama alone would not sustain 
yeah, the rigors of the practice because you need to draw your energy. You need to get that stability and the energy from the asana. And then, yes, yeah, meditation is also advanced, but how can you meditate if the body and the mind are restless? So they go hand in hand. Yeah. So we promote understanding. So when we see someone practicing asana alone, yes, that's yoga. Yeah, how complex the asana is, whether it agrees with our principles or not, it's still yoga because the body is the vehicle for the energy to flow. If one person is so focused on the energetic observances, pranayama, yes, it's still yoga. Yeah, because channeling the energy yeah, makes the mind uh, focus on one point. It becomes one or centered. Yeah, because yeah, when you meditate, you can uh, utilize that inner awareness of the subtle energy for you to rest your mind on. So if you see someone doing meditation alone, yes, that serves him. Maybe that person is already energetically open to begin with. Yes, there are people who are like that. But still, we need to go through the process because at the end of the day, we're still living yeah, physical individuals and we need to open the body. And then when the body is open, the grace of God descends easily because there's the temple and we can lift our primal energy up. So when we do our union, when we do our stillness, yeah, we feel holistic, we feel accomplished, we're happy and we understand the many things, the differences around us. Thank you always for listening and have a beautiful, productive day. And I'll see you in the next video. Namaste. Bye.